All right, here we are. Welcome everybody to our remote lear learning workshop for grades K to four. I'm Andrea Johnson from Wilmette Public Library. And with me today is Jennifer Lee, another librarian from Wilmette Public Library and librarian Linda Dykeman from District 39. If you guys wanna wave hello to our participants. Um, and thank you for watching our video. If you're watching this archive video from home later. Um, what we're going to be showing you today are some resources um, to help your remote learning experience be, uh, be better and also to show you some um, access to ebooks and, and other great stuff from the public library and the school library. So um, Linda is going to tell you a little bit about, let me spotlight you Linda, here we go. Linda is going to tell us all a little about what the importance of what we're doing today. Hello everyone, welcome. It is so important um, for students at even the very youngest years to understand that information and know where to find information, good credible information um, to base any of their research on uh, or their investigative efforts, whether it's just to um, facts that they want to enjoy to share or to play trivia with um, or to use for school, so personal or school use. And what we're highlighting this evening is a number of resources, some available through the school district, others available through the public library, some available through both, that will allow students to have the very best sources of information, credible information um, that's put together by researchers and academics and has been very much vetted um, as opposed to often you know it, I think our tendency is to sometimes go to a google search and that's a great way to answer some questions and find a new recipe but it's maybe not the best place to find information um, to base our own research off of and I'm going to start this evening um, by talking about probably my favorite of all resources and that's the encyclopedia. So this is one of my prized possessions at home. Uh, and as a kid, I spent a lot of time going through the encyclopedia. Well, here's the thing is now we have encyclopedias available online. This is not totally up to date. It's, uh, it's over 10 years old. So, Electronic versions of encyclopedias give us um, up-to-date information changed as things and as events in our world happen. Uh, the encyclopedias are updated and changed. I'm going to share my screen and show you some of these resources. At the school district, um, we maintain a virtual library um, that has a number of places to find information. And we're going to be looking at our uh, research resources. So when I click on that page, we have a number of items available for all of our students and then some specifically for the older grades. But you can see for all students, we have the World Book, we have Britannica, and then Image Quest, which was, uh, is a, a subset of the Britannica Encyclopedia. And these resources are available as well through the public library on their online resource page. When you are here, you can click on encyclopedias and then you would have Encyclopedia Britannica and World, um, World Book Online available. And when you're logging in, the thing that's really wonderful about all um, both World Book and Encyclopedia Britannica is that the products have different levels that are appropriate for different age groups. So this is the advanced level. So that's really gonna be appropriate for our high school students. But if we're down here at the bottom of World Book Products and we click on that, we see that there's an early learning tab for our preschool and kindergarten friends. The kids section is for elementary students. And then the student uh, version of it would be more appropriate for fourth, fifth and sixth grade. And I'll just kind of bounce over here to the kids version of this. And we can see that this is just highly visual. The graphics are wonderful. 
And in addition to your traditional search up here, you also have another other points of access to information. So uh, animals, activities, maps, games. And this becomes then where the search occurs, the article about dogs. I typically use this one as one of my favorite places to start researching with children. And one of the things we see is that we have the ability to have the article read. So students who are pre-readers or need reading support have that option. We're able to talk about the subheadings and headings that go on and how to actually navigate these, um, these articles. And then we can also take a look here. I'll go to the early learning tab. There are some wonderful pieces here in terms of videos, games, stories, and other activities. So, and again, you can see that this is activated. There's a voice activation in this as well. The Britannica Encyclopedia um, also has three levels, elementary, middle, and high school. Uh, the elementary tab, there's a search bar that comes up. And again, when we're here in the article, we can see the three reading levels for this particular article. And again, working with um, the youngest reading level here, we get a chance to see the attractive graphic interface. So we've got videos that we can watch. The information is broken down into sections. Students can really use this to um, find the information that they're, that they're looking for. There are a number of features in both products that are uh, just incredibly browsable. So here, when I click in this way, I can go into the World Atlas, I can go through biographies, I can click on the Animal Kingdom, I can just explore. So as a child, while I would have explored my print encyclopedia, I'm actually able to do the same thing through both of the encyclopedia products. They are, um, stop my share right now, but the, um, the encyclopedia is a wonderful jumping off point for older students and even adults as you start to look up information on a topic that you're not familiar with. It gives us a sense of the vocabulary and other search terms that might be important. Um, and with the online versions, there's all of the, um, the linked text to other resources that we can bounce off of. So, so much of a, an improvement over the print, uh, the print versions of the encyclopedia. Um, next, I'm gonna to introduce to you Jennifer Lee, who is one of the Wilmette Public Library librarians to talk about a fabulous product called BrainFuse that I think you're really going to like. Thank you, Linda. Hi, I'm Jennifer from Wilmette Public Library. So today I'm gonna show you all with the BrainFuse online tutoring service that we provide from our homepage, Woman Public Library homepage. So I'm gonna jump right in and share my screen with you guys. And uh, during the presentation, if you have any questions or if you want me to search anything using this service, please uh, leave it in the chat, please. And I will, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, can you all see my screen? Okay. Okay, so this is our Woma Public Library homepage. And under resources, there's a homework help section that you can click on. And on this page, we provide resources designed especially for kids in kindergarten through eighth grade. And it's available free with your Woma Public Library card. And uh, we have many databases that you can access at it any time. And uh, under tutoring and learning tools, there's a brain views. So 
So like I said, it's a free uh, tutoring service, which is available from 2 to 11 p.m. So live service is available during this time. And it's, uh, it provides online tutorials, practice problems, and test preparations. They, uh, they actually provide a lot of service there. So I'm going to click here. And in order to access to this web database, you need your library card number. So I'm going to type in my card number. OK. OK, so we're now in uh, the BrainFuse website. And so we have, as you can see, there are three categories. Under expert help, there's a live tutoring, writing lab, and more information there. And under study, uh, flash bulb, and more. And uh, collaborate is um, also, you can see meet and uh, brainwave. So these are like different services that you can uh, use anytime. And I'm gonna highlight some services that will be helpful to you. So first, uh, before I start, I'm gonna actually log in using my username and password. And I recommend you to uh, set your username and password to access all the services. So I'm gonna, I already have my, I already set my username, so I'm just gonna use it. Okay, so I'm gonna log in. So I'm gonna start with the live tutoring. So it's a live online help from expert tutors. So I will just show you how this works. So before we uh, go into the live session, we have to set the grade. So I'm just gonna say second graders and I will set for second graders and I'll choose math. And if you want to uh, find uh, tutors who speak Spanish, you can actually click here. Um, for now, I'm just gonna unclick it and I will click on get live help. <laughs> I already actually tried it. So the tutors were really helpful actually. So if you um, ask them how to like help them with the question, they actually explain step by step and there's a, like a whiteboard. So they actually use it. So you get to write on it too. So you both get to write on the whiteboard, which is really um, interactive and it's a sort of like virtual lesson space. So I recommend you to use it. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna exit out of that. Okay. Do you see my screen, the website screen? Okay. Okay, so yes, this is an uh, online live tutoring uh, page that you can use. And let's go back here. And yeah, and under live tutoring, there's a li writing lab. So this is pretty neat too. So it's um like you can actually, upload your documents of writing and simply upload your document and one of our uh, one of their writing experts will analyze it and provide helpful comments. So if you have any assignments or if you need improvements, you can upload your document and they will get back to you. So this will be a very helpful, um, helpful service that you can use. And let's see. And I will show you how this skill surfer look like this is very helpful. It provides a uh, uh, live skill building and a library of lessons and videos and test them more. So it's a very um, good, uh, so simply though it's a li the learning library that you can access and you can access, you can find all kinds of worksheets and you can even do the test. So it's a good uh, resource that you can use as well. So as you can see, there's a grade level, uh, so LMG school, middle school and high school, and th there's also college prep and uh, there's resources for adults as well. So you get to choose one uh, that your your level. And I'm gonna hit elementary school and I'm gonna show you uh, third grade math and uh, to show you how this look like. So there are different topics here that you get to choose from. And there's a lot of information. So like uh, grade, uh, third grade math practice, and there's like a modeling division and there's like algebraic information and stuff. So you can actually choose your topic here and I will show you one of the example here, multiply by two, three or four. So, this is very helpful. Like it's sort of like a lesson that you provide on the top. So as you can see, kids get to learn how to do um, 
multiply by two by uh, looking at this visualization and also this uh, explanation right here. So kids get to go over on the top to learn about this and on the bottom when you go down, now you try. So they get to solve these questions by looking at these images and they get to do, they get to like test their skills and they uh, get to reflect what they learn on the top. And on the bottom, when you go down, there's much more questions that they can uh, solve. So when they're doing this, uh, have them have a notepad on the side and they can actually write on it and they can solve this question. So I, I find this very helpful because it acts as a worksheet. So if you need any math worksheets or reading worksheets that you need, you can just access here and then you can copy these questions and then practice at home as well. So when you go back, there's a, like, I find this uh, collaborate section uh, very neat as well, because like when you click here under meet, it actually, you can, you get to schedule a session with your friends and this space will be uh, the virtual story room. So when you click on it, you get to uh, invite your friends uh, using their email address and you can set the date and this will be collaborative, um, uh, like a whiteboard that you can uh, study with your friends. I find, I found this very helpful and neat. So feel free to use it anytime. Yeah, and also, let me see. The last thing I'm gonna show you was the send question. Even though their live tutoring hours are 2 to 11 p.m., you can send in any question at any time and in this section, and they will get back to you within a few days. So it would be helpful to send any questions anytime. Yeah. So if you have any questions, leave any uh, questions in the chat and we'll get back to you to, to that too. Yeah. Great, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so we're gonna get back to Linda now. And Linda is gonna tell you about an exciting new way for kids in District 39 to access eBooks from the library. Um, and some, uh, we're gonna show you some other resources to access eBooks. So we're really excited about, and I'm showing again our virtual library, which this is again our launching off place um, for accessing information in District 39. And we're very excited about this ebook product called Sora, um, which is the student reading app. And it allows students, this is what um, the actual uh, login page looks like for students um, in Wilmet 39. And in terms of reading a book, um, it's when we click on a book, we can actually borrow it, go through reading a few pages of the book. This is a, a, a book that's really wonderful book for our middle grade students. But in as we get more and more comfortable with ebooks, um, we, we understand kind of the functionality and the reading of them. And so in that way, this product um, works like other ebook products. Where it differs though, is in our ability to not only search for books that are in the school district collection, it allows us to connect seamlessly into the public library's collection. So if I wanna search here for a book, I'm actually searching in both of our library, both of our library systems, the public library and the school district libraries. So if I'm looking for the world according to Humphrey, my results come in here with the school district's um, holdings but then when I come down here to the Digital Library of Illinois, I see the other books that are available to me as a District 39 student from our public library. And that's uh, a seamless 
piece for our students once they have established their account. So we're very excited about this. It's allowing our students to access far more information um, in, in a much easier way than they've been able to in the past. And they're also able, um, it, it takes out the step of logging into the public library with their public library card. The students are actually logging in with their school district credentials, which is something they're very much used to doing at school to access a number of other, um, a number of other items. The other public library uh, ebook sources are really robust and really exciting. I know I'm listening to a book on Hoopla right now, an audio book, um, but I'm very, very excited that Jennifer is going to be sharing with you information about Tumble Books, which is, I think, one of the, the neatest products. Um, out there for younger readers. And I think you'll really enjoy seeing that. Thank you, Linda. So yeah, I'm gonna show you a Tumble Book Library. As uh, Linda mentioned, it is a very neat uh, database that we have, we offer. It's animated, talking, and ebook great for pre-readers, beginning readers, and English language learners. It's a great resource that you can use. So I'm gonna share my uh, screen here and okay okay so it's it yeah it's under same page under homework help and when you go down you'll be able to find tumble book library here and i'm gonna click on it yes this is the page that uh, you can see so tumble book library offers uh like a lot of services, as you can see, it offers storybooks, read-alongs, ebooks, and graphic novels, and more. So um, it's a great um, database that you can use, and you can find uh, many collect many books here too. And unlike uh, Libby uh, Overdrive, it's the books are always here, so you don't actually have to check it out. You can just access to the book at any time. So I will, as an example, I will show you story, how the storybook looks like. So storybooks are really a cool feature, cool collection that, uh, that is for younger ones. And it's a read, -al read aloud books that you can access. So for, I will show you this awesome book called Bloom. So when you click read online, you'll be able to see and hear what this book look like. I'll just briefly show you how this look like. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a beautiful glass kingdom, there lived an unusual fairy named Bloom. Her boots were caked with mud. There was dirt between her teeth. Beetles rested in her wings. Bloom's magic could spin sand into glass, turn weeds into blossoms and grow a trickle of rainwater into a racing river. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a very interactive and fun uh, feature that you can use and you can uh, play this uh, for your kids. And yes, and it's a very enjoyable book that you can uh, play with, yes. And uh, let's see. So we actually, uh, Tumble Book uh, Library also offers eBooks and as you can see, there's a, a pretty big collection here. So you get to view, um, so each categories have a different topic like books by Kate DiCamillo and early readers and chapter books. So this um, Tumble Book Library offers a lot of uh, books and it's a pretty big collection. So in order to see the whole uh, collection, you can just click on the top view all titles and you, you will easily uh, notice all the books that they offer right here. So you can just click and then start reading. It's very simple and easy. So they even offer graphic novels and nonfictions. So these are like a popular uh, graphic novel or illustrated fiction that they offer. So you can access to any books anytime. 
And they have like a two uh, pretty neat feature that you can use. So uh, favorites. So each book have a favorite section on the left side. So if you click on it, all of your favorites kind of store in this page. So you can go back and look at your favorites later. And also the, the playlist, I found it uh, very uh, pretty fun to explore as well. So when you add each book in a playlist, you can continuously play this book. So you, it will be stored like a favorite and it's a good feature that you can use as well. And uh, yeah, and lastly, I will show you language learning as well. So if your kids are learning Spanish or French, they can uh, explore these books in Spanish and French as well. And uh, like other collections, you can just click here and you'll be able to see the whole collection. So it's a neat space that you can utilize as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. If you have any questions at any time, you can put them in the chat and we can answer them. Also, if you have some assignments from your child or special interests um, from your child that you want uh, us to look up, um, we can do that as well. Um, again, I'm Andrea from the Public Library, Wilmette Public Library, and I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite resources called Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next. And then after that, I'm going to show you our newest uh, uh, product that we've purchased for, from the public library. It's Scholastic Teachables, uh, which has a lot of great printable worksheets um, and activity sheets. So, and uh, oh, I just wanted to say that, of course, we had mentioned this before, but all you need to access uh, the public library resources is your library card, and you're just entering that barcode on the back um, to get any of these. Uh, resources for free. Okay, so from the Wilma Public Library site uh, under resources, as Jennifer said, go down to homework help. And I'm going to show you Pebble Go Next first. So Pebble Go Next is a learning hub that's designed for kindergarten to third grade students. Um, and then there's a, another version called Pebble Go Next, which is for older students. So I'm going to show you Pebble Go first. I'm going to put in my library card number. And here we are. And this is kind of a, a simplified encyclopedia for younger students. It has simple navigation. It has text that's designed for early readers. Uh, it has read along articles. They're read aloud. It's user friendly even for the youngest students. Um, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a little tour. Um, first, I wanted to note that under science, that's where they put math. And they also put art under science, which is interesting. And a topic that a lot of teachers, you can see how it reads aloud to you. Um, well, I wanted to go to seasons, I'm sorry. Seasons, a lot of teachers and kids are asking for resources about the fall and about pumpkins right now. Um, so you can see they have several different articles Let's look at animals in fall. So you can see that even the headings are read aloud. So even a student who's not reading yet can use this resource. Um, and under fall, you can see that there is a very short um, encyclopedia article. It can be read aloud by pressing the speaker button, this yellow speaker button. And the red words are defined. So if you click on the red word, you get a, a definition that also can be read aloud. And under these blue tabs, you can see the article continues. And then if your child wants more information under read more, they have related articles. <laughs> um, so as you can see, this is a really great resources for the primary grades. If they're citing resources yet, which they're probably not yet, you can get that at this, this button at the bottom if they're doing a bibliography. Um, they can also get a PDF of the article if you want to print it out for them. So if you click that, they'll give you a basic, um, they'll give you a printable version of it if you want them to read it that way. Go back. Ooh, get me back. 
Okay, sorry, one sec. Okay, this didn't happen when I practiced. No, it's not what I wanted. This might be an, oh, I put it in a new tab. Sorry about that. Okay. And if you scroll through these other, let's see. Let's go back to the home screen under animals. They've got all kinds of animals and also insects and dinosaurs, also pets and farm animals. And since we're having a dog theme, I can show you the dog article. And you can see they even have articles on different breeds of dogs. If you go to the Pebble Go home screen, um, you can click on the tab for Pebble Go Next, which is geared for students in grades three to five. And here they can learn about key concepts related to social studies, biographies, science, the states, and Native Americans. And uh, something that I, th I thought these are really good quality. If you, if you go in here, um, it's really easy to navigate. Um, easy to find your state, and you can see from what this sample article that the language is a little more complex and a little more dense. Um, but it still has the read aloud, but there's a lot more um, information to be found in Pebblego next. So a great source for their research projects if you can't get to the library or can't get a book uh, in time. This is a really popular assignment when you need the state symbols and they're all here and facts about each state. That's another big assignment. Um, biographies. Biographies is another popular assignment. And let's see, I was reading the Yo-Yo Ma one, which was fascinating. So we have a whole biography of Yo-Yo Ma, um, images that can be saved if they need images for their project. And if you go to the bottom, you can see there's a timeline for uh, the biographies, which is also usually a part of a a requirement in some assignments. The videos were um, okay. They're very brief. Some of them are, are not narrated or they don't really have any sound. But there's a video of Yo-Yo Ma. Well, that's lovely. I could watch that for a while. Okay. <laughs> so that's Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next. Uh, great resource to explore for assignments or even um, just to explore a special interest with your child. Next, I'd like to show you um, Teachables. Teachables, let's see, can I go all the way back? Teachables um, used to be called Printables, and it's a product by um, Scholastic. So if you're at wilmetlibrary.info, again, resources, homework help, you're gonna see Teachables. We've just added it recently to our library of e-resources. And it's uh, parents and teachers have access to over 30,000 printable resources from pre-K to grade six. I'm logging in with my library card. Bam, there I am. So mainly it's activity sheets and lesson plans. And they cover all subjects and themes in the curriculum. So let's take a look. Um, if you go to topics at the top, you can choose by grade or you can choose by subject. So let's say your child is learning addition and you need some help with that. You can just go to math and addition and subtraction and addition. And it'll show you all the worksheets and activities and mini books for learning addition. Now you'll see some of these look like they'd be more valuable to a teacher, right? Um, but they also can be valuable to use um, as extra practice in addition to what you're doing at school. Um, what's also a lot of fun for the kids are the mini books. And what the mini books are, are little printable books that you can cut out and put together. And there's just something about a mini book that the small kids find so appealing. Um, and you can filter your search on the left here. So what I'm gonna do is go down and just search for mini books on edition. Oh, wait a second. Oh, it's not in the edition. Okay, what I can probably do then is just go to mini books and search there. Okay, so let's do that. I wanna show you these. So in the mini books menu, you can narrow down to math, let's say. So if your child's struggling with, with addition, narrow it down to addition and subtraction. And this is what the mini books look like. Let's see, this is 
So here's one called How Many in All. You click on that and then you click on See Inside. So if you click Open, it's going to download a PDF for you to print. But if you want to see what it looks like, click See Inside and just scroll through. And all this is is pages that you can print out and attach together to make a little book. Um, so that's another great way to practice and they're all illustrated as well. Um, another benefit to the mini books is you can create a leveled reading library. So if your child's been assigned a reading level and um, with, with a guided reading level, which is the letters, um, you can find mini books for each um, level of, that your child's been um, assessed at. And then you can um, have them color in the book and practice reading that book. And there's a little pumpkin book. And this one you can see, I'm gonna close this out, is um, at level, guided reading level D over here. So those mini books are a lot of fun. They cover all subjects and themes. Um, like I said, if you click over here on Family Hub, I'm not sure why they call this Family Hub, but what it does is it gives you a menu by grade. So you can see everything um, by grade. And I know we have some little ones in this audience here. So I'm going to click on Pre-K. And you can see worksheets and mini books, um, over a thousand uh, for the Pre-K level. And you can narrow them down here by subject or by type. There are also arts and crafts here. If you need something to print out to keep your little one busy and they like to do arts and crafts, here are 904 um, arts and crafts projects that you can print out for pre-K. Okay, let's look at this autumn leaves. See inside. There's a poem, something to color. And I know a lot of the parents in Wilmette are looking for screen-free activities for their kids to do. So that's why I think the Teachables has another appeal so that you can, if you have a printer at home, you can print something out and have them work on it screen free. Okay, so that's what we had to present for today. Uh, if you have any questions for us, we can at the public library be always be reached at youthdesk at wilmetlibrary.info. And uh, Linda, how can uh, parents want reach you directly if they um, don't get the answers from their teacher? Um, they can reach me at my email address, which is dykemanl at wilmet39.org. So it's D-I-E-K-M-A-N-L at wilmet39.org. Fantastic. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, as always, your public librarians and your school librarians are here for you for all your information needs. Mm -hmm. So please uh, stay in touch. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you.